the legendary Earl Hayes Press has been printing material for the film industry since 1915. Every newspaper, license plate, book, passport, product, or dollar bill has to be designed and fabricated so that it can be cleared for the big screen. And these folks have been doing this for well over a hundred years. I recently got to wander through the warehouse and chat with Michael Corey, who has taken on the monumental task of cataloging and archiving this important collection. All right, Michael, I, I can't remember if you know this or not, but I got my very first uh, job in the arts was as a graphic designer in the 80s before computers. So I'm in a very happy place in this building. <laughs> Tell me where we are. So we are in Earl Hayes Press. It is one of the oldest prop houses in the United States. Earl Hayes started out as a dressmaker but he also owned his, uh, a printing press, right. and he was good friends with a guy named Harry Warner and his brother Jack, the Warner Brothers themselves, <laughs> yes. back before they were anybody. Right. And they, he realized there was a need for printed products for the film industry, so he started printing checks. He started printing the dialogue cards for silent films. Right, He's, because right now we think of paper props as being really trivial to replicate because Xerox machines and, and copiers are so, and, and printers are so ubiquitous, right, yeah. but that was only in the last 20 years. Very that recently, those, yeah, yeah. yeah. As far as the film industry is concerned, everything was done by hand. It was all laid out by hand. It was created so by hand. All those checks, everything was offset printing back then. Every bit of it. Oh. And all of it was done here until about the early 2000s when other companies started doing their own printing shop. All the printed products of Hollywood came from here. Everything from so every if, production. So if company. there's a, a poster or a check or a stamp or something, yeah. passports, <laughs> everything. It was made here. It was made here, yeah. This is a really, that's insane. It's yeah. an insanely rare locus of, it's, it's really like a choke point. Of, yeah, it's really kind of the, this is sort of the last of that golden age of Hollywood prop making that's still in place. They still do it the old fashioned right, way sometimes. Right, right. And it's really the last company to still do it and have all those connections to the old, the old way of doing things. And it's great because as I dig through it, I find more and more evidence of how it was done in the back in the day. Well, I want to rewind for a second and go back to why are you digging oh, through yeah, it? Oh, yeah, that's probably helpful, what, isn't what, it? What, tell me about how that came to be. So I, uh, by a uh, random happenstance, a prop master friend of mine, John, who uh, you just met, uh, he brought me here one day. He said, you'll like this place. It's cool. And I fell in love with it immediately, and I got to know the owners and the family of the owner. Yeah. And as they were telling me the, the difficulties of keeping a place like this open, I just I took it upon myself, like, I need to do something to save this place. So we started looking through here and there, because they'd never let anybody go through their archive, which, by the way, was not an archive. Right. It was just shelves full of stuff that had accumulated over the last century. Full centuries. of everything they've yeah, ever made. ever made. So they didn't throw stuff <clears throat> out. <clears throat> <They're>, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Occasionally they did, otherwise <laughs> we wouldn't be able to move. But, but nonetheless, they, this was a building full of a hundred years of film history. Absolutely it was, and no one had ever gone through it. And they finally let me do it. Over the last six months, really, I've been working to archive this place. And I've been following your videos. It's, it's really and thrilling. And you've seen, yeah. it's just absolutely batty what, what I've been able to uncover and in what circumstances I've been able to uncover. Things that were long thought lost mm -hmm. or were never known to exist are just sort of showing up. Well, now, as a fellow prop replicating mm -hmm. nut job like myself. <laughs> it's a fair assessment. Uh, I have done a lot of paper props in which I have assembled them by multiple screenshots to create a master mm -hmm. document that I've then gone over and done an overlay of careful kerning. You're looking at originals. I'm looking at the originals. And, and you've also done that same thing that yes, I'm describing. Yeah, exactly yeah, you've done that down that road a million times. Uh, yeah, because like, I work in the industry as well as a prop maker, so I've done it before for film, but yeah. I started as a hobbyist. And that's how I got into this whole thing was as a hobby. So I followed that same like trail of obsession well, to especially find. Especially because as a hobbyist, you're going to put in more oh, labor yeah, than absolutely. you would ever put on the clock. Because it's for me. On <laughs> yeah, the clock, yeah, it's yeah. get it done. <laughs> but for me, it's I want it to be that idealized version of the thing. I want it to be perfect in every way. Well, it's lovely that you're going through this because you have both the love of film history, and the love of what stories these pieces have to tell, and also the, the ability to put it in context. Yeah, and, and because I've, I've been so steeped in this almost my entire life, I can recognize it too. Right, Whereas right. so much stuff would just, oh, that's a thing, that's a thing, that's a thing. But in this building here, you can guarantee that everything you find is from the movies. It's not just some product that was made randomly. Right. It's all of it is from a movie, but then you have to find which one. It's funny. So I remember trying to replicate a prop a few years ago, and I managed to obtain 
an original paper prop of this prop I wanted. Mm -hmm. And when I went to replicate it, I realized, oh, I can't, because I can see that this is four color process printed, right. and I can't imitate that right. on the la laser cutter. Laser printer can do a lot of things, but it can't imitate right. a CMYK process. Yeah, that is, yeah, and, and all of this was just, you know, up to a point. It was done in that process, and it was just these old styles of things that can't be replicated. And it's, it, I, I still, even after doing this for about six months, I still get giddy yeah. when I pull out a thing and it's like, ah, that's what that is. And then, you know, I share it mostly with myself because most, <laughs> you know, few people would care. But as I start to, when I share it online yeah. through social media, then everybody else gets to share in that discovery. Yeah. And it's like, I get to Indiana Jones my way through this. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. Well, so we have, we have a, a table full of some, some of the artifacts here? Yes. This is maybe 10% of what has been discovered okay. so far. And All it runs right. the gamut from... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to touch this. <laughs> this, this. For reals. Yeah, for reals. They made the... Uh, they made the Ecto-1 <laughs> license plates, and they also made... They made the Out of Time! The Out of Time license plates Oh my here. gosh. Star Trek. L cars, yes! Yeah, yeah, Star Trek. All of the original printing blocks are here, what are called cuts. Um, you have Blazing Saddles. You have the, the Rock Ridge Help Wanted poster there. Oh my god, Let's, can we start pulling these yeah, out? Yeah, by all means. Beyond, anything. Uh, this is Sound of Music. Uh, these are the telegrams. But this is an unopened pack of them. And as we all know, they're worth more in the package, but these are, these are like telegrams. straight from the oh production. My God. This is uh, the original uh, Biff Tannen money negatives from Back to the Future 2. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, right, that is the printing master for yeah. creating the plates. <laughs> <laughs> And these were discovered in a random box uh, that was not labeled correctly, as is tradition here. And it was just when they were done with the job, they put them in a box that they would fit in. Right. And no one kept track of it. Wow. And you end up with this. And the Beetlejuice cards came. We found the original printing block for that. That's the rock. I'm so here. sorry. Yeah, I, no, I'm that's, stopping yeah. here. <laughs> I recognize this. I figured that would catch That is eye. Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. And this is, oh, this is an actual printing block for the IDs. Yes. Uh, that is, we found those over in a corner. Um, they are the original. We have all three Dude, parts I to it. Dude, I have Photoshopped this exact text. Well, now you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's... It's amazing what's discovered here, and then it goes back all the way to the silent film era as well. And a classic film that is a favorite of mine, yeah, yeah. which I lost it over when I found it. So we'll get these. This, this, is, this is actually from Sahara, Humphrey Bogart's okay, Sahara. Okay, right, right. But if you flip it over, this is a, a pre-release publicity photograph where they were still calling it Somewhere in Sahara. But not Sahara, yeah, right. So were, it's like Revenge of the Jedi. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And this is the same way. Uh, this is from a Dead Reckoning with Humphrey Bogart. They're publicity photos they would give to Earl Hayes yeah. to make the publicity stuff. But these, like, these series of photographs were found in a shelf that had nothing to do with anything. This gentleman here, I'll flip it over and you can see it, Sir Harry Lauder. Do not release before July 1st, 1920. He was a comedian and singer and was the highest paid performer of his day. Wow. And why they have this and what they made it for, we have no idea. Right, but it was some part of a publicity campaign. Some part of a publicity yeah. campaign. This is the, the original cut, and these are the original Perry Air labels from Spaceballs. <laughs> Perry Air. It took me a second. Yeah. So a lot of people, it took them a second, including Earl Hayes, because <laughs> they've been selling them as Perrier labels for a long time. And they've been making it into so, films. Yeah, so there's a lot of them out there somewhere, but these are the last ones left. Oh, that's great. So uh, one of them went off to Prop Store, and then these two are being kept for the company's history. Is this a wet decal? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize that you could get such, such high-fidelity, crisp... It, it, it's amazing what they were able to pull off in the, in the 80s when they were doing this. And then, yeah. and then when it comes to classic films that everybody knows, so this, this has a bit of an interesting story to it. Yeah. So these are the, the Kentucky Hill whiskey labels from Casablanca. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. Beautiful. And back then, they would actually just attach those to the bottles with milk. Really? Yeah, milk uh, sticks the old labels to the bottles. So they would just do it really quick, brush on some milk and stick them on. But this was discovered in a filing cabinet. So it's got a couple <clears> dates <throat> on it that make it a little weird. So 1935, uh -huh. and then 
uh, Metro Goldwyn Mayer. So this is a layout for a French passport. This is how they used to lay out artwork right, and create right. them. So what they did was they got an original passport from right. the French government mm -hmm. in 1935 and built this. They used this for the Great Ziegfeld, for the passports made for the Great Ziegfeld. Okay, yeah. But there's another date on it that also kind of adds to the story, February 17th, 1942. And they used it to make this passport because it's the prototype for Victor Laszlo's passport from Casablanca. No way. Because that is several, just a couple of days after production began on oh Casablanca. Oh my gosh. So they're doing all of this anti-counterfeiting printing mm -hmm. on here to match the original. Yep. Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, having done all of the uh, all of the Jason Bourne paper props, mm -hmm. this is this is hard stuff. This well, is it, it. It gets worse. Air yeah. quotes. Yeah. Go so, go go. So, Take me all the way down. Yeah, this yeah. Rabbit let's hole. go all the way down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so in this exact same filing cabinet that this was found in, yeah. there's there was a file folder that just said French paperwork. <laughs> that was all it said. Yeah. Yeah. And in it was this. This is the last one known to survive. It's the Vichy water label from the last scene of Casablanca. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's just like you do, stuck away in a shelf. Wow. And then... With, with a... Yeah, still, still with a has sticky the bag. Stick back on it. Yeah. Wow. Untouched after all these years. And then as I was going through it, I pulled a piece of paper out and I ignored it. And then I went home, because I go back and forth between here and Chicago. This is what I'm really excited yeah. about. So I was super excited about it. And, and I watched Casablanca. Yeah. Because I'd found the Vichy <clears throat> water label, and I thought, wait, no, did I? I, was, I saw the letter of transit, which is, that's the Maltese Falcon of Casablanca. It is right. the MacGuffin yeah. of the film. Yeah. And I, there's no way I saw that. I, as soon as I got back here, the first thing I did was go over to those filing cabinets <laughs> and pull out the only surviving copy of oh the letters of transit from Casablanca. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and the, the fading around the edges is yeah. just absolutely perfect. The but the procedure at the time, when they made this stuff, was the first one off the press, they would keep it. Right. So that if they came back and said, we need more, they could reset all of the, the printing mm -hmm, plates mm -hmm. and then make them again, and they'd have this as a reference. Well, they never needed it again. So to keep it for reference, they stuck it in their reference cabinet, and it's been there for 80 years, untouched. It has not seen the light of day since the production. Incredible. That is, that is, here you go. <laughs> I, I, it, I realize that perhaps the most common theme of things that I seek to replicate are MacGuffins. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I just love a MacGuffin, yeah. and this is one of the all-time great is, Yeah, this is MacGuffins. one of the most classic films ever made, and my favorite film of all time. Slide that guy in there. And we've, just to protect it, we've, we've digitally scanned all these now. Sure. To, just sure. to preserve yeah. them. Yeah. And then this one, will end up probably remaining as part of Earl Hayes' collection because yeah. it's their history, you know? Yeah. And it was the next day after I'd found this yeah. that my assistant, Christy, said, hey, look what we found. So this is one of the original production-made newspapers from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. <laughs> <laughs> from 1954, it's wow. a survivor, which you see this beautifully right. on the screen, right. but you don't see below the fold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we know what below the fold looks like, but then it's, it's like, well, what do you do? Well, then she was standing over here, and you'll notice that underneath it says 20,000 Leagues. Yeah. I'm going to pull the paper away. It's the untouched printing block what? for the newspaper. Oh, my gosh. It's been sitting basically right below where it's sitting now for the last 60, 70 years. Well, in fairness, the last 40 years, because that's when they moved here in the 80s. But it's exact. Yeah, yeah, it's completely yeah. untouched now. Wow. And that, technically, we could throw this right back on the press and start printing again. And just run another one. Yeah. Amazing. But there's three of these left that we know of. <laughs> and all three of them just happen to be in the building. <laughs> That's incredible. It is, I love that it's not just the original printing blocks, but you're looking at the paper that they were using at mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. The famous seven-column recurring newspaper, which has been seen in thousands of films at this stage. Everything underneath here, of course, lorem ipsum. Right, right, has right. just been reused over and over and over again in numerous films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just would print the front page, and these happen to survive from '54. And if you if you look over there, you'll see all these pipes up here, right, for yeah. their their exhaust system. One day, one of the guys that worked here was cleaning out behind there, and he pulled several rolls of paper out, and amongst those rolls of paper were these. <laughs> Each of these stories is the same narrative, and I yeah, love it. Yeah. These are the original blueprints for the flux capacitor. 
What? Yep. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, with the handwriting and on of them course, and everything. this wonderful bit, do not build. Wow. But these are the originals. There were five copies found, uh, along with the original negatives, uh, which are somewhere here in the building. Crazy. Yeah. And I'm sure they're grabbing pieces of what a different blueprint mm -hmm. to cobble yeah, and just this throwing together. it together, yeah. Because mm -hmm. these would have been drawn out here in their art department. Right, right. And then once the approval was given. So that's a question that I had. This isn't just a place that was a service bureau. Mm hmm just generating the objects. Yeah. They were also doing the graphic design for the studio. Yes, they were. So yeah. they're bringing the expertise of what, they're always, clearly they've always had the expertise of what does a whiskey label look like? What right. does a passport look like? These are all really specific design yeah. environments. Yeah, and all of them have to go through the process of clearing. Right. Because none of them can look, they can't match perfectly with an existing product. And that went all the way back to the early days of film. We know this because of that right there. What's that? This says phony names for newspapers. It's from the 30s. Those are cleared newspaper names from the 1930s used here at Earl Hayes Press. Oh my God, this was hanging up on a wall yeah. as a guide. Yeah. <laughs> So these were all acceptable names for yep. fake newspapers Absolutely. that were pre-cleared so mm -hmm. that they didn't have to worry. And not only that, but also magazines and French newspapers and Spanish newspapers. Oh and gosh. somewhere, there's the rest of this because who knows how many names they developed over the years. And that's just maybe the only surviving part of it, but that's... <laughs> That's great. And then, I, since you lifted that, now I see the back of what looks to me like the Die Hard Bearer Bond. That is precisely what that is. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> I bought what was said to be an original, and mm -hmm. it is so not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen um, the originals that people have put out. Yeah, they're shiny. They're, it doesn't yeah. have a backing. But, those, but this is it. There it is! That oh is it. Oh, my God, that's it. So <gasps> we know the cuts for these that have all the printing exist in the building. We haven't found them. Oh, yet. for what went what, in? What in? Because yeah, everything was made in here. And I found these about, well, I won't say how many I found, but I'll show you in a little while. Yeah. But, uh, oh my God. Just stacked on a shelf. <laughs> and they've been forgotten about since the 80s. And there they are. Those. It's lovely, too. And as, it's on they, a... as they sit right here, yeah. they were ordered by the thousands with no printing That's, on them. Yeah. When they dumped them from a crane at the end scene where they're all raining down, they didn't bother printing them. Of course they, they were didn't. blanks. Because you're just seeing the You're just seeing paper. The shape. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But yeah, that is the diehard bearer bond itself. It's, it's And that's the thing that no one gets in yeah, the end no of the one knows what it looks that like. thing. Yeah, because you barely see it. You barely really. see it. You literally I have the screenshot from the Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see it like this. Yeah. And, and then you don't know the, what the rest of it looks like. And wow. and now now you do. Now you know full well. That's incredible. But this, it's, it's just another, it, and like you said, the story is often the same with how this stuff is found. Right. It's just randomly found because these guys were working so much. Right. They just put it away and moved on to the next thing. And no one cared about this stuff for the longest time. I've spent so many, I mean, we've already covered at least four things that I have replicated. And when I say I've replicated, it meant that I have spent, like, you know, mm -hmm. dozens of hours staring at every letter. I mean, the amount of kerning I had to do to do the bathroom instructions from 2001 <laughs> when I finally got the Blu-ray. And that means I've spent a lot of time in the heads of the people that made mm -hmm. this stuff, right? I'm walking down some of the same paths. But it never occurred to me that it was all happening mostly one location. Yeah. That's really thrilling to me yeah. because, like I said, I've got I've logged a lot of miles on a lot of this graphical <laughs> genius, right? And it's really a delight to know that it came from a place. Yeah, it all came from one house over decades, you know, multiple different people, yeah. of course, but all working towards the same goal of telling these ma these wonderful stories on film, and all their imagination pouring into all of this. Well, and, and you barely see it. But the other part is, is that as a prop replicator, I have also, as I'm sure you have in the past, gone to real printers mm -hmm. and said, can you make me this thing? And they just go, no. No. <laughs> they just literally, no, no, no. If it's yeah. not an easy annual report, I'm just, I'm not gonna do back and forth, I don't care. And I've hit that wall many, yeah. many times. And so it is a unique thing for a place being willing to, yeah, to have do an iterative this. design and, process. Because this is a very complex design. Oh my God, and this you, kind of, yeah. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then when you look at the other bearer bonds they've created, because this is one of about 1,500 different bearer bonds they've created over the years. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> oh, we'll, I'll show you that upstairs. Um, 
this is a Tuesday for them. Yeah. You know, because right, this is just right, something right. they've done so many times over the decades. And so, they, it's just, Google, it's gorgeous. I'm so excited at your partnership with them. Yeah. Because it really, that it is what that requires. Oh my God, RoboCop, OCP, <laughs> more lease. <gasps> oh, I've totally replicated these. Yeah. Oh my God. And okay. all of them came I, from here. We have to choose an arbitrary stopping point. There will be some other videos <laughs> shot here and I will be eagerly following your progress and I'm sure this isn't our last uh, visit together because right. this is, what a thrilling project. So one more thing that I wanted to show you real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got like 10 seconds. So in a shelf behind some, same story as everything else, was an unopened pack of these, the four color the NASA IDs, IDs. The NASA IDs, the Mayflower IDs from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, from the final scene. That's all four colors used in that scene, oh. all in a pack together, oh. just on a shelf. Oh, Forgotten. I have, this has been one I have pictures of, but I've never gotten around to replicating. I mean, IDs, I love IDs. Oh yeah, absolutely, I, love my I do too, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of IDs for a lot of places I've yeah. never been. But. That is incredible, height, weight, eyes, hair. Mm -hmm. Right, and then a picture would go there. Yep, and then they'd be inside of a little plastic sleeve and with a clip on them. One of my all-time favorite films. What a thrill! Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Adam, for Incredible. stopping by. I appreciate it. What a it. thing! It's yeah, I know. I have the same reaction. It's so good. 